What is going on everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Now today's first entitled parent story is honestly one of the most serious that I've read in a long time. Unfortunately in this one an entitled parent lets a baby get really ill and they come very close to passing away. Now thankfully they don't and don't worry they're all okay now just want to say that from the off but it's still a very interesting and nearly a very tragic story. Let's get into it. The time my entitled mother-in-law and father-in-law almost killed my child. The title is a bit dramatic, but oh well. I just got inspired to write about my crazy mother and father-in-law, and I hope that this can be used as a cautionary tale in this crazy time of the vid. This was back in 2010. We had to live with my husband's family for a while. It was my sister-in-law's house, but we lived with her, her daughter, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, and brother-in-law. When my son was five months old, my niece got violently ill one night and kept throwing up. Obviously, I decided to keep the baby away from the family so he wouldn't get sick. They didn't like that, especially my mother and father-in-law, who kept whining and complaining that I was keeping their precious grandson away, even after explaining that I didn't want my niece to get him sick. I gave in eventually because I was tired of hearing them complain literally all day on the condition that my niece stays in her room the whole time and they wash first. Now, I'm aware that this is where I messed up. I had to use the bathroom and was only gone for a few minutes. When I came back, my niece was on the couch holding my son, snot dripping from her nose, throat scratchy, with my father-in-law telling her, give your cousin a big kiss, which she does right on the lips i freak out and snatch my baby and lock us in the bathroom so i can wash him the whole time my mother and father-in-law were at the door telling me that i'm overreacting and that sharing germs builds immunity and other bs of course the next morning he has a high fever and he's really lethargic i tell the in-laws that i want to take him to the hospital but my sister-in-law was adamant that it wasn't that bad and that i should make an appointment with his pediatrician instead now i didn't have a license or a car so i had to rely on other people like an idiot i listened to her because i thought she was on my side and knew more because her child is older i made an appointment for that afternoon I get there and the doctor took one look at him and told me to take him to the hospital which was one block down and said that they'd be expecting me he was admitted as soon as we walked in the door they told me that i was lucky and that if i'd waited any longer my baby wouldn't have lasted until the next day his lungs were filling up with mucus and he couldn't breathe he had to be hooked up to an oxygen tank and they had to vacuum suction the mucus out every hour we spent a week in the hospital and he made a full recovery of course the in-laws fully blamed me my mother-in-law especially but the others more or less agreed with her she said my son got sick because i was dirty for having a child out of wedlock and a bad mother my husband was fuming and told her off but that woman has the worst case of selective hearing i've ever seen I never fully trusted her ever again. Right guys, now I'll be honest. I don't know exactly which infections and which diseases a baby is supposed to get before they are a certain age. I do know that you are meant to expose your baby to certain ones of those, aren't you? Like, you know, chicken pox and stuff like that. You're meant to get at an early age so they don't affect you negatively later on in life. But that's not the case with every infection, is it? I mean, come on. You're not like permanently coughing on your baby when you're sick, trying to get them ill or, you know, kissing them on the mouth when they're not even your child come on that's ridiculous like look those of you that are more informed than me comment down below what you're actually supposed to do i clearly have no idea but i'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do that that is a little bit too far and i don't even know why i'm laughing to be honest that could have been so so serious yeah i've just i've just completely forgotten that your baby nearly died op i'm so sorry good thing you got to a doctor in time though my god because that could have been absolutely tragic that's unbelievable i mean i know your husband got annoyed with his parents and that side of the family but they don't seem to care that much that's what's mental like surely at least they've apologized or something but throughout the story at the end of it i saw not even like a, a hint of an apology just oh it's your fault are you kidding me because you married out of wedlock your child nearly died these people man unbelievable i mean seriously a baby nearly died and they don't even care it's shocking now moving on to our second story entitled mum accuses me of luring her kid to my car 
then gets upset that I didn't offer him snacks. So, it's the first week of school, and my nephew Andy and his friend Falcon are attending the same school again. This, however, is a new school, not the last one. Both my sister-in-law and my neighbor, Sissy, Falcon's mother, have me on their emergency contact, and given that I have an active role in both the boys' life, I was asked to come in and walk the halls, do the meet and greet, and fill out some information. I've been given this little yellow card for when they get off the bus. As Clarissa and Sissy are both at work, the boys and little Beth will be chilling at my house after school. I've got a card for Beth as well. All things are good and everyone's happy. Later, I'm waiting at the bus stop in my 2000 Civic, which is immediately a ricer. I've got a kit on it that kind of makes it look like a skyline. I'm driving it a lot right now because I've agreed to give it up to my niece for her 16th. And I want more time with my first car after putting almost 10 years of work into it. Things start when I hear a lady, we'll call her Karen, not because she's a Karen, but because I know that's her name, talking rubbish about my car. She's over there, standing outside her Ford Focus, looking like the mean female dog she always is. Now, I know Karen well enough. Her son, who I will call Dennis, like the menace, was once Falcon's friend, and would be at my house with Andy and Falcon and their other friend, Puck. Puck is not his name, but I call him that, and it's a nickname that sticks. He looks like the character from Gargoyles when I was little. Little boy with long platinum blonde hair and elf-like features. He likes the nickname, his parents get the joke, but he is a timid, effeminate little boy. So, a little backstory on why I'm bringing this all up. Puck, Dennis, Andy, and Falcon were over my house a lot. Puck would come by all the time to get otter pops or fruit snacks or muffins randomly, even when Andy wasn't around. He's a good kid, they play with him all the time. Then, one day, he stopped coming over when Andy and Falcon were over, but he would still stop by randomly. So I'd noticed Dennis being a brat to Puck, and I had a couple of times stopped Andy and Falcon from being mean or saying mean things to the kid. They never mistreated this kid before Dennis started hanging out with them. Turns out, Karen, Dennis's mum, is like a hardcore Baptist-style Christian and thinks that little Puck is gay and therefore didn't want Dennis hanging around him. She even came to my house and talked to me, saying she didn't want Puck there when Dennis was there. When I kindly told her to go Puck herself, you don't dictate what happens in my home, she hit me up with the you're not even the kid's father kind of rubbish. Now, Falcon's dad was still alive at this point, so I asked him to go tell her to go Puck herself. Sissy didn't like her anyway. Well, I came to find out from Puck's mother that Dennis had told Puck he couldn't play with them at my house anymore and that Dennis had beat up Puck. I went to talk to Dennis about this later when he was at my house and he said that his mum had told him it was okay because Dennis was a, insert horrible slur here, and he was going to hell. These kids aren't even 11 yet, my God. So I went to confront Karen, who was a real dog about it, like terrible. And I ended up saying that Dennis could not come back to my house. Also, I talked to Falcon and Andy about what Dennis did, has been saying, and I also talked to their parents. End results, neither Clarissa or Sissy wanted their kids to be around Dennis. Sissy didn't like Dennis because of all the trouble he caused in her house, and this was just the final straw. So, fast forward. Right, so we're back at the bus stop now. Karen is giving me the stink eye, and I'm just ignoring her. The bus comes, Andy and Falcon get off, and they come to my car. All the kids are actually fascinated by it. Now, usually I hardly let the kids ride in it instead of my truck because, well, I worked all summer long back in 2006 to get these fancy seats and stuff. I usually don't even like to have little kids in it, but I'm cruising and we're gonna go to Rita's today, Italian Ice. A bunch of the neighborhood kids come up and they're talking and asking about my car. I'm letting them see the inside, though I'm wiping hands or whatever. I got a little thing on the front like Knight Rider. Yes, I'm a nerd, but it's cool. More buses come and we're waiting for Beth's bus. She goes to a different school. And eventually, Dennis gets off his bus. He sees Andy and Falcon. He sees the car. He sees me and he comes over. Now, I could be a butthole here and tell the kid to get lost, but I'm not particularly venomous about the kid. He comes up and his mother comes over quickly. 
He asks me if he can see the car. He's always been into it. I look at Andy and Falcon, who are like not sure what to do, and I'm like, sure, Dennis. Take a mask, wipe your hands. I've got a box of masks and gloves and hand wipes and stuff. Now, half of that was in the car before COVID. But you know, little kids can't be vaccinated. And they got grubby little Cheeto hands. Now, Dennis's mum does not like this. I hear her screech. What's going on? What are you telling him? Now, he's actually cool about it. He says, it's okay, mum. He just asked me to wipe my hands and wear a mask. He's gonna let me sit in the front. Then she gets involved with the, why does he have to wear a mask? The other kids aren't wearing a mask stuff. I tell her the ones who jumped in my car got a mask and had to wipe their hands. She then goes off about COVID and blah, blah, but then takes a turn when she says something in her tirade about me luring kids to you with your car, which I had to stop and stare at her for. Now, Andy, my nephew, has been in the car many times. He knows that if you lift the thing in the back seat, there's a cooler down there, so he goes for the snacks. He always does while this crazy lady is yelling at me after a moment of craziness and the boys munching on chips beth shows up i'm so happy i close my doors lock them and go and get her i come back and karen is still at my car waiting to fuss at me dennis is waiting to get in i tell him look maybe next time because i just want to leave at this point he asks if he can have a snack and i look at his mum, and she goes what you're not even gonna offer him a snack you gave the other kids snacks now technically andy was the one who gave falcon snacks from my car and if he didn't give dennis one well that was intentional i know andy and he's a little stinker in the making but i'm like sure fine what do you want we got chips and juice and some mini snickers all stuff i can't eat anymore due to my diet but i keep in my car and i keep my shelves stocked gotta use that costco card for something dennis does not want a snack now he wants to get into the car i think he thinks it's either or like he can't do both his mum snarls and tells him to get a snack then beth asks if we're going to rita's and i say yeah we'll go to rita's and she says she hopes they have the birthday cake now dennis goes oh birthday cake can i come now at this point i really don't know what to say like hey you mini hate crime to kid so sissy and clarissa don't want you around their kids and i don't particularly like you which would be the truth but instead i immediately get slick at the mouth and say i don't think that's a good idea i wouldn't want to lure you in with my car and the promise of treats looking directly at his mum who then lays into me for not offering to take the kid not five minutes after she said that exact same thing earlier she then starts talking loudly and gets the other parents involved but this is my neighborhood and most of these people know me andy and falcon and dennis has been a little idiot forever and people are tired of karen so thankfully the most unlikely person in the world spoke up it was an old asian lady who was so sweet i didn't even think that she spoke english or at least spoke it well but she told karen to shut up and take her horrible kid home and i heard that clear enough folks began laughing karen scowled at me and i told dennis he can sit in the front seat before he left if his mum agreed now of course she didn't called me a butthole and she just dragged her kid off after that we went to rita's and all was good but i heard the kids talking about dennis's crazy mum the whole time i tried to stir the conversation away talking about their first day back at school and all that but nope they wanted to talk about dennis and his crazy mum so yeah that's my experience with an entitled mum the problem is this is probably going to be a thing since we're picking up the kids at around the same time though the rest of the week she only glared at me from her punk car and dennis has arrived before andy and falcon since so it's not been a huge deal but i'm sure that that woman is a ticking time bomb oh my god mate that's just the worst so you've had this big falling out you know this big confrontation clearly you two are not liking each other and you know that you're gonna have to see this woman probably what for the rest of the school year maybe multiple school years every weekday every school day at the same time every day god 
That is horrible, but at least you put her in her place, so well done. As for Dennis, I completely get what you're saying, because you know earlier in the story, Opie said that he doesn't really have a problem with Dennis, despite the fact that Dennis is the one who was, you know, saying all these horrible things. But it's clear that he is learning and getting this stuff, this horrible, abusive mentality and language from his entitled mum. So as OP does, I completely blame the mother, as I do with all these stories, you know. Dennis is 11. Like, guys, how bad can an 11-year-old really be? You know, they're just, they're listening to what their parents are saying taking loads of information in from them and they're gonna base their opinions and what they say off of their parents obviously like any normal kid so i don't really blame him and i completely blame the mum. let me know if you you know agree with that or do you put some blame on dennis i don't he's 11 anyway guys that is gonna do it for this one really hope you have enjoyed it if you did and you want to see more videos just like this one check out this one on screen it's another absolute banger if you're new around here subscribe up here and turn notifications on so you never miss one of my daily videos and uh yeah with that all being said i think my voice is slightly recovering now which is great and i will see you all tomorrow with a brand new one